Okay, so today what we're doing is we're writing the solution to uh, the grocery store get rich scheme where your money doubles every day but you start from one penny. So we really need two concepts here. So before I begin coding, I want to kind of show you guys uh, the um, concepts on our whiteboard here. So in fact, what we've got is we've got our, our day, okay, and then we've got our pay, and then we've got our total, okay? And we need to make sure, and in order to, 30 days, this is, that's the total, right, 30 days. But in order to make sure that this is working properly, what we should do is pick a small number of days so that we can do it manually by hand. So let's pick, let's say, uh, let's pick four days. One, two, three, four. And so if it works for four days, then we know that uh, it's working properly and then we can get the solution for 30 days. This is a very uh, common technique in order to make sure that your algorithm is correct. Because if you do it for 30 days and you don't, you don't know if it's working, there's no way to check it because that's, it's too much calculation to do on paper for 30 days. So on day one, your pay is going to be 0 0.01 dollars or one cent. Now your total on that first day is going to be 0 0.01. Now on day, let's put some lines like this. And on day two, your, your pay is going to double to two cents. And now our total is going to be, we're going to have to add these two okay to provide the new total which is going to be three cents okay so in other words your total money here that you've made after two days is well you got paid two cents but you had one cent from the day previously then on the next day your pay doubles again to four cents and when we add these we're gonna get seven cents okay the next day your pay doubles again to eight cents, okay? And when we add those, we're gonna get 15 cents, okay? So that means after four days, we've made a total of 15 cents. Obviously, you can see why this can be quite misleading, right, to a person who might agree to it for 30 days, but, uh, Let's now go to our code and see what this would look like. Notice here before I move on, we've got three different variables there. We've got day, pay, and total. So what I'm going to do here in the code is I'm going to start out with simply the days. So I'll go, now, next thing I have to ask myself is, is this a for loop or a while loop? Question. Do I know how many times I'm iterating? Answer, yes I do. Therefore, it's a for loop, okay? So I would say for day in range, uh, and in this case, I'm going to say, I'm gonna start from one. Doesn't really matter, I can start from zero because I'm not actually gonna be using the day in the calculations. But uh, I will say five because I wanna go to four days, okay? So now if I simply go print day and I run this program, I get one, two, three, four. Perfect, that's what I want, okay? So if I go back now to my, so now I've got this first column done, okay? Now I wanna do pay and total. Now, if I go back and I say, all right, well, how much is my pay right now? I don't really want to set the pay inside the loop because this is going to be um, 
changing every time. So if I say pay equals 0 0.01, if I say that here, then that's what the pay is going to be every time because I'm putting that inside the loop. I don't really want to do that. I want to take this line and control X cut it, and I want to place it up here. I want to say that my pay is one penny up here. Okay. Now, the other thing which I need to do is I need to say, okay, what about the total? Now, I haven't done anything here, but I can double my pay. I'm not going to do it just yet. So I'll maybe put it down below here. I'll say my pay equals my pay times 2. Now, this will double my pay. And so effectively, uh, this works here. So you can see how it's going 1, 2, 4, 8. That's doubling it. It's multiplying it by 2. So if I go back, I still don't have a variable for total. And I can't put it in here because if I do, if I say total, well, what's it going to equal? Well, it's going to equal, I have to, what's the, what's the purpose of total? All I do is I keep adding my previous total, right? So I'll take this amount. I'm taking my previous total, and I'm adding it to current pay. And when I add these two guys, that becomes my new total. So I hope that's pretty clear in terms of what that looks to, needs to look like. If I write it here, I could say, oops. I could say my total is equal to my old total plus my current pay. And that makes sense, right? Basically, this is uh, a sum. We're adding the pay always onto my current total. So let's go into the code and let's put that in. So I've got total equals total plus pay. Now, if you're wondering why line 6 comes before line 8, it's because if I do line 8 first, then my first pay is, is going to be 2 cents, not 1 cent. I don't want to double it before I add it. First I want to add it, then I want to double it. Okay or else it's not going to make sense. So I, don't, I guess I don't need this blank line here. But there's a problem. If I run this program now, it's going to crash. And I'll show you. If I hit F5, it crashes. And the reason it crashes is because it says total is not defined. And that's true. On line 6, I'm trying to set, I'm assigning to the variable total, but, I, well, but what is this variable? This previous total doesn't exist yet. That's why I need to set it before the loop. I need to say total is equal to, what do you think would be a good value? I'm not going to say one penny. How much do you start out with in your bank account before you've worked even one day? let's say zero. In other words, you don't have any money before you start working. So now once this loop is finished, let's print after the loop, not inside the loop, let's print out what your total is. Okay. Now let's run it and notice we get 15 cents. Now in order to that's that's rounding from Python um, because we're using a floating point number here because pay is 0 0.01 so pay is a floating point number it's not an integer and so therefore we know that when we work with floating point numbers uh, we're never really gonna get um, integer like mathematics we can fix this though we can use an F string here to print it out, um, we'll go like this, and then we'll say square bracket, and we'll say um, 
I think it was uh, total, and then there was like this thing, and then you can put dot to f, and I think if we do that, let's see what happens. Uh oh, I messed up here. Oh, I forgot the closing quote. My bad. Let's try again. Okay, so that looks better. That's 15 cents. Um, so I'll run it again. There you go. So one, two, three, four. Those are the days, but my total is that much. I don't have to actually print these days, so I can simply comment those out. Uh, but now that I know my program is working properly and I've tested it for four days, all I need to do for 30 days is come up here and change this to 31. And now if I run it, I get, hmm, how much money is that? It's hard to tell because there's no commas. So let me fix that. So let's go like this. Let's say after 30 days, you made dollar sign. And now, here's another trick I'll show you guys. If you put a comma here, I can't remember if it's before or after. Let's try running it. Okay, so I think it's before. So let's try putting the comma before. Let's see if that works. There you go. So now, notice it says 10 million seven hundred and thirty seven four hundred and eighteen dollars and twenty three cents <coughs> notice that in order to make it look pretty I just put a dollar sign in front and I put a comma dot and then a period 2f meaning two places after the dot the the comma has to come before the dot the, the dot 2f because I think the dot 2f goes together so um, that's a lot of money, $10 million after 30 days. What's interesting, though, is let's see how much you make on each day. And surprisingly, you make most of that money on the last day. Because if you think about it, your pay is doubling every day, right? So how much money did you make on the last day? Can you just simply deduce that? If you made 10 million in total and your pay is doubling every day, think about how much you made on the last day. Can you figure it out? All we need to do here is say print and we'll use an F string here again. And we'll say total and we'll put total in here, but we'll go like this. We use the same technique. Okay? And so now when we run it, that's going to print inside the loop, right? And so, notice and in fact, um, not all the days are shown there. Okay, so now they're shown. On the last day, your total was, but that's not actually what I wanted to print out. Didn't I want to print out your pay? So let's print out pay. So let's run it again. And let's change this to pay. And so there it is. It's $5 million on the last day. And if you want to say what day it is, you could just say on day day your pay is Okay, and then run it, and then it says, there it is. On day 30, your pay is 5.3 million. 
After 30 days, you made 10 million. Problem is solved. Yay. But notice, here's the important thing. We tested it initially with only four days, and we made sure it worked properly first. OK? So what's our next problem? Well, here is our next problem. Um, our next problem is something that is going to be quite familiar to you. So let's, uh, let's get rid of all this. And here is uh, I, again, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Here is Earth. OK? And let's assume Earth has a population of, um, let's say, 8 billion. OK? Here, is an alien, I don't know if I spelled that right. Is that how you spell alien? I can't remember. Um, or, OK, let's just say UFO. Here is a UFO. And uh, they've got some three-legged monsters with like four arms or something. And uh, they're coming to attack Earth, OK? They want, they want things like our minerals and our water, uh, but they don't really want humans. So they're going to destroy. They're going to kill all the humans because they can do space travel, and we can't, and they're way more advanced than we are. But in order to kill us, they're not going to uh, kill us like they do in the movies where they blow up buildings and stuff like that. That, that really wouldn't be an effective way of um, removing humans and still leaving everything intact so that they could plunder the natural resources of our planet. Instead, what they're going to do is they're going to drop a small little probe. Looks like a TIE fighter. And that probe, very small, very tiny. And inside there is going to be a virus. And that virus is going to drop down somewhere in the world, but it's going to start to infect people. And the way it infects people is, We've got the day again, right? And we've got the infect the um, in people infected on the day. So we've got the day infection. And then we've got the total number of people infected. Here is the reason why this virus is going to work so well. It's because the incubation period is not a few days. The incubation period is going to be one year. In other words, no one on the planet Earth is going to know that they're infected. You will show no symptoms, no signs. But you will be infected, and you will have the virus. But you'll only realize that you've had the virus a year later after being infected. So in fact, everyone will be spreading the virus. No one will know that people are spreading the virus, because the first person to get the virus will only show the symptoms a year after being infected. So in that year, how many people on the planet will be infected? The question really is, how many days is required? Because one day, right? 
or sorry, what, one day? One year is equal to 365 days. How many days do you think it's going to take to infect the entire, here, let's move this down a little bit, the entire 8 billion population of the planet? So let's, let's take a look at how this kind of looks here. Let's say day one, day two, day three. Let's go to four days again. Ready? Day one, how many people are infected? One person finds the probe and touches it. How many people infected after one day? One person. Okay? After two days, well, the way it's going to work is that one person is going to pass it on to two people. Oop, not seven. That's a one. And then that one person, let's go like this. And then on the next day, so this is like, this is day one. This is day two. This is day three. So in other words, here we've got one person. Here we've got two people. Now these two, these two people in turn infect two other people. But the one thing which we're not doing, notice, is on um, day two, what about the first person? Do they pass it on? So this, this model is going to be extremely conservative in the sense that this first person is only going to pass it on to two people on the first day. After that, our model, our mathematical model is going to assume that no other people get infected by this person. But I want you to know in reality, obviously, this would not be the case. You could pass it on to more than two people. And then on day four, of course, look what's going to happen. Each of these people are going to pass it on. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so on day three, we're going to have four people total infected, right? So let's put down what this is. Okay, ready? So that means um, on day one, we have one person infected, one total infected. On day two, how many people were infected? Two right and what's the total number of people infected now three right because again we're going to add these two then on day three notice the number of people infected is four this is also a geometric progression because we're doubling the number infected every day okay um, I can't remember, but I think for Corona COVID virus, I believe the doubling rate, I think when it was at its worst in the springtime was something like seven to 10 days, somewhere in that region. So obviously this is with a whole bunch of measures in place, but our doubling rate is every day. And the reason for that, right, is because there is no measures in place to stop its spread because no one knows about it. No one's exhibiting any symptoms because the incubation period's one year. So notice then on the next day, right, we've got eight. And so the total infected here would be seven. And again, the total infected here, adding these two, would be 15. Very similar. The one dip, so this is very similar to the previous kind of program that we wrote. But the difference here is we're not trying to figure out what this value is going to be. We know what this value is already. It's 8 billion. What we want to know is how many days does it take to get there? Okay, so this is known. That's 8 billion. This is what we want to find. How many days does it take to get to 8 billion? So this is a slightly different program.
but very similar concepts. Give it a shot and pause the video. Don't watch the solution until you've tried it. Um, and, and when I say try it, don't spend two minutes trying it. I really want you to make an effort here. The more of an effort you make, the more you'll get out of it. Pause the video. OK, and we're back. So let's go over the solution to the uh, virus problem. So you could see here that um, we had the uh, day and the infection and the total infected. So let's do this, except there's one big difference in this program, and that is we don't know how many times we're going to iterate. That's the part that's unknown. We know the total value that we're going to get to, which is 8 billion, but we don't know the number of days. So therefore, if we don't know how many times we're going to iterate, we're going to have to use a while loop. So once again, I'm going to say day here. And uh, we'll say in the beginning, we'll say day equals, uh, let's say, day 1. And then let's say uh, total here is equal to 0 right now, total infected. And then the number of infected on that particular day. So let's say uh, infect. OK? Um, now, <coughs> we're going to have to set some initial values here. So right now, let's say the number infected is 0. No, we'll actually have to set this to 1 in order to double it. Because if we, if we set it to 0, uh, if we multiply 0 by 2, it's not going to grow. Now we're going to have to go into a while loop. And we'll say while total is less than 8 billion, OK, so that's 8E9. And you can write the E as a capital E or, oops, uh, or a lower E. That's fine. So now what we want to do is we want to increase things. So we want to increase the number infected. So first, let's, before we double it, since our infected here is right, already 1, let's go total equals total plus infect. Okay, So the total is 0 right now. And before we continue, let's just change this to 4 days. And let's see if we get the right amount. Um, so oh, no, 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 not four. Um, I'm getting confused here. Let's go down here. And so let's make it. Uh, so notice on day four, it's 15 people. We have to be careful, though, because Do we have any floating points in this problem? Answer is no, we do not. So we could say here less than or equal to 15. Um, now let's go down. Because you have to be careful, because with floating point numbers, it's not a good idea to use the equals. OK? Uh, let's go down here and let's go total equals total plus infect. Now, on the first time through, total is going to be 0 here and infect is going to be 1. Now that that's done, we can now double our infection for the next day. Okay, Infect equals infect times 2. And 
then we could say, now we need to figure out, okay, well, what about the day? Notice before in the for loop, the day was being incremented by the for loop. Here, day is not going to change. Day is always going to be one, unless we increment it. And so I have to increment day manually here. It's not like a for loop. And in order to increment it, I have to go day equals day plus one. And so now, after the loop is finished, I'd like to print out what day it is. So let's now save this and run it. And that's six. So that's not matching with this. Okay, so in order to debug this, uh, let's actually print out the values here. So after we, oh, right, okay, so here's what's going on. We're actually doing plus one here after we've done everything else. So once this loop is finished and it goes back up here and it tests if total is less than or equal to 15, the day is already increased by one. So uh, therefore, I would say that we're going to, if we change the location of this, um, to here, if we go Control X and we put it here, will that make a difference? No, it doesn't. So if you think about it, to whether we this loop here is not dependent on day; it's dependent on total. So changing the location of day isn't going to make a difference to the total, which is on line seven. So we could leave this here, but we have to understand that this day is going to be incorrect. So we may end up having to subtract one here. Or another way of doing this is simply to print day here, but to change it here and say 0. That means. Now, when we start on day zero, basically your total for day one is after day one is finished. This, to me, makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so if we run this now, we'll get five. So that makes sense because when we go back to our graphic, it is on the fifth day that 15 people are infected. Now, notice, um, if we print out the values, now we, we, in this particular case, we're not, we're not doing it, um, how shall I explain? Let's, let's print it out, and maybe that might help us kind of comprehend things here. So do we print out the total before or after we add? I would say after, let's go print total. Total equals total. And now, um, the, the infection for that day is not doubled yet, so let's print out the infection as well. So we could go like this, and we could go like this, and go like that. And then I'm going to change this to infect. OK. And the other thing which I want to do is um, print out the day. Okay, so let's 
Let's print the day out. And let's come over here and let's do the same thing. OK, let's run that. Now, oh, let's also put in a, a, a print at the end because um, we can do this a number of ways. You can just go print like this, and that'll, that'll accomplish what we want. And let's just see if this is working out the way we want it to. So day 0 total and this doesn't really quite make sense right because you could say day 0 the total is 1 infected is 1 um that's not what i want so let's change this back to day 1 and let's run it again now in this case We've got the total is 1 after one day, and in fact, it is 1. Good. OK, that's correct. The total is 3 after two days, in fact, it is 2. So let's take a look at this, and let's see if this makes sense here. So let's see if I can just kind of close, make this slightly smaller. And let's see if this makes sense. Total infect day. Total here, we got one, one day. So that, that matches up, good. OK, next, total three, infect two, day two. Yep, that works out. Next one, third day. Day three, four infected, seven total. Yes. So now we can see that. Um, our model is matching what we wanted, our prediction, so that our code we know now is correct. Um, the one thing that I would say that is not exactly correct is that it's printing six days when really we want it to print five days. Um, so let's close this and let's go back and let's change this to less than let's let's run it again and notice now it says five days so because we're only going to do the loop while it's less than that once we get to that mount, we don't want to do the loop anymore. So if you think about it, equals was the wrong thing to put. Because once we get to that value of 15, we don't want to do another loop iteration. The, the thing that's still not quite correct is, now this is a, depends on interpretation, is the 5. Is the 5 what you want? Now what that's trying to um, what I'm trying to convey here is think about um, what if we change this value? What if it wasn't 15? What if it was, say, 16? Okay. Now, if we run this again, it says, aha, six. So notice here the total is 15 people, and then here is 31 people. Okay. And that's day five. So, in fact, uh, I would say that the six is one too many. So we'll have to adjust this. And the way we're going to adjust this is simply by printing out day minus one. And I want you to understand why we have to do this. It, we don't want to change this first day because then the, the going total isn't going to be correct and, and all our numbers would be off. However, what's important to realize here is that before you go back up to line 5, line 12 happens. And so even though this is going to be false and the loop is going to stop, we've already executed the last line 12 one more time. And that's why we have to undo that line 12 on line 13 and say, OK, that's how many days it actually took. Because this is going to add one more day. and. We can't really get around that. 
So we're going to fix the answer by subtracting 1 from the day. And in fact, if I run this, um, and I, let's say I say, uh, let's try for a smaller number. And let's say, OK, how about like something like 12? If I run it, it says, OK, four days. So if I look at my, that's right. So in other words, if I want um, 12 people, how long do I have to wait in order to infect 12 people? Well, if I wait three days, that's not enough. I've only got seven people infected. But if I wait four days, I've got f 15 people infected. And that's correct. That's more than 12. So now that I know everything is working properly, notice the process in which I had to go through in order to figure this all out. Now I can change this number to the bigger number now that I understand that the program is working with small numbers and I know the algorithm is correct. Um, I can now change this to 8 billion E9. And if I run this, now I'm going to get a lot of, uh, I'm, go I'm going to get a lot of printout here. But the most important thing for me to uh, recognize is that the total here is 8.5. And notice the total before on day 32 was only 4.2 billion. Uh, and once again, I can, I can change this uh, total amount to uh, make it look better. I can go like this. If I, if I, I'm wondering if I just do that, does that work? Yes, it does. Nice. OK. Yay. Python 3 for the win. So um, here, you can see that's 8.5 billion, and this is only 4.2. So I, I do have to wait until day 33, and this does print the correct day. Notice that this day is the same as this day, only because I subtracted one. Because after all this is finished, I'm still adding one to the day. And then it goes back up. This fails. This, is, this becomes false, okay? because total is now more than 8 billion. And so now I have to go back and subtract 1 from the day that I added on line 12. So long story short, 33 days is the answer for infecting 8 billion people. Uh, surprisingly smaller than uh, what you might suspect. So in one year, I think uh, pretty much guaranteed everyone's going to be infected. Uh, fortunately, this is, not real this is not reality. This is a very simple mathematical model, so I don't want you guys to uh, be disturbed by it in any way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's simply uh, for learning purposes. This is not what's happening uh, in the real world. OK, um, I have one new assignment for you guys. And that is, uh, let me go back to my here. And this next assignment is uh, going to be something called factorial. So let's kind of create some new space for us. And let's discard this. So what is a factorial? Well, it is represented on calculators uh, with something like this. Ready? So you go, let's say the factorial of 4 is written 4 exclamation mark. Now, it's a mathematical uh, calculation, but what it's equal to is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So that's 2, that's 6, and 6 times 4 is 24. So if, uh, actually, I can actually show you this um, uh, here. I think it's like called kcalc. All right, so if I bring up my calculator and I um, go into settings and I go into science mode, or yeah, 
So, and I think I have factorial. Hmm, trying to find where it is. Was it in the other one? Factorial. I can't see it. Maybe I'm just missing it. Let's go back to science mode. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's go 4 factorial, and there we go. It's 24. Okay? So, and obviously, if we were to do 5 factorial, right, it's 5 times 24, which is 120. Okay? So, what I want you to do is to write a program that will say, enter number uh, to find factorial. Or how about this? How about we just, instead of saying enter number, how about we just say factorial of, and then we get to type in a number. And let's say we type in 4, and then the program should say factorial of 4 equals 24. So that's what I want the program to do, is calculate the factorial of a number that you enter, an integer. Okay. So uh, the solution to this problem will be in next at the beginning of next lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this class. See you next time.